Okay, this is going to be a basic Mahjong tutorial covering the fundamental things that I believe are most important for a new player to make sure they understand and have down really well to start getting better. So the first topic I'm going to cover is just basic loan tiles. So you have your honor tiles and these tiles are really hard to use when you just have one of them because the only way you can use them is to draw another one of them and there would only be three other ones left. Then you also have your ones and your nines, which are more useful than honor tiles because there are 11 tiles you can draw to go with them. So with a one, you could draw one, two, or three, and with a nine, you could draw six, I mean a seven, eight, or nine to go with it. Then you have next um, twos and eights, which have more useful tiles. So with a two, you could draw one, two, three, or four to go with it. And finally, you have your middle tiles, which are the most helpful, because if you had like a three, you could draw one, two, three, four, or five to go with it. And if you had a five, you could draw three, four, five, six, or seven to go with it. So the basic rule you want to remember is that your middle tiles are mo more useful than the tiles closer to the edge. And um, your number tiles are more useful than your honor tiles. So let's look at this idea in some example hands. So this first example is something you might see as your starting hand. So let's say in this hand you don't have any Dora and South isn't a Yakuhai. So your first discard would probably want, would probably be the South win because again it's an honor tile and it's also not a Yakuhai. And a Yakuhai would be um, your own wind, the round wind, or a dragon tile. So you probably just discard south wind first. Now let's say you draw one of character after discarding the south wind. And again, because honor tiles are really hard to use, even though east and white dragon are yakuhai, you would probably just want to discard one of those and it wouldn't be too bad to do so. Especially because it's not the Dora in this case. So... Um, there are going to be a lot of exceptions, actually, but just in general, this is what you would want to make sure you understand. Like, it's easiest to draw your hand if you discard your honor tiles first. And then the exceptions are more, like, high-level stuff sometimes and more complicated stuff like that. But anyway, if you discard the east wind, then if you draw, say, the three pin, it would be a good thing you kept the one pin because the one pin can go with the three pin. So the one pin becomes pretty useful now. And now you would probably discard your last honor tile, the white dragon. And again, like I said, there are going to be a lot of exceptions, but this is just the basics for now. So let's look at another example where you have um, some completed sets and some lone tiles. So here you have the one, two, three of characters and the four, five, six pin, and then a pair of eights. So if you take out the completed sets and look at your hand, your hand would look something like this. And so the six, seven is a weight to complete a set and you could draw either the five or the eight. And then you just have some lone tiles. And using the ideas from above, you'd want to discard the nine because it's the hardest to use because it's on the edge. So let's say you discard this 9 and then you draw a 1 bamboo. Now the 1 bamboo goes with the 3 bamboo so you don't want to discard that. And now you would want to discard the 2 pin because the 5 is better than the 2 because the 5 is closer to the, to the middle. But one thing I do want to mention is that you don't really want to look at your hand as like you don't want to separate the completed sets out of your hand because it might make you miss things that and not see things so if your hand was like this and then you drew a seven pin or like this i guess you discard the nine and you draw a seven pin if you took out your completed sets it wouldn't look like the seven pin can be used really it's just a lone tile but because you have two and then four, five, six, and then seven, the seven can go with the five, six, 
so you have five, six, seven, and now you have two, four, which is a weight to complete a set. So this is why you wouldn't want to just take out the completed sets and look at your hand like that. You would want to understand how your hand goes together, um, how everything in your hand goes together, pretty much. Now here's an another example. So you have this this hand that's almost in ten pi. You have two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, a set of south winds, and a pair of twos here. So all you need to do is draw a tile around one of your lone tiles, and you'll be in ten pi. So like if you drew a seven of characters, then you'd have seven, eight, and you would just need to complete that to complete your hand. So now you have to choose the best lone tiles to keep. And let's say you drew this one pin. So you could use the above ideas and say, well, a one, a one is the least useful. You have the one, the eight, and the five. One is the closest to the edge, so it's the least useful. But this hand, um, this is, again, that concept of you want to see how your whole hand works together. So in this case, you, you would put the one with the two and the three. So you have one, two, three, and now it's a lone four. So actually, you would want to discard the eight of characters because four and five are closer to the middle. So they're more likely to be useful than the eight is. So again, you want to see like how your hand, like how all the tiles can go together. Now let's look at one more example with this concept. And this is going to be like one of those hands that you, um, you might not use the same rules. So this might be one of those exception hands because your hand is just not that good and just giving yourself the best chance to like draw tiles you would maybe discard the honor tiles like east and west you might also discard the nine pin for something i'm going to talk about later but um because this hand really isn't that good um you might want to hold on to your honor tiles both as um more likely to be safe tiles because it's also harder for other people to use honor tiles and also because you might want to look for Yakuhai. So in this hand you could discard the 9 pin. You could even discard the 6 pin. Because terminals are more likely to be safe. And because um, you could get Chanta in your hand or S Sanchoku. Something like that. So you might discard the 6 pin. And you could even look at like discarding the 6 pin. And if you draw a bunch of character tiles going for Honitsu. Um, this gets like a little bit more complicated, so I'm not going to go too much into it, but, um, the idea here is that there might be a lot of exceptions where you don't just want to discard your honor tiles. So you don't want to make it like a rule that you follow a hundred percent of the time, or you have to do that. You just want to think of it as a good general idea. Now let's move on to the next topic of basic set weights. So the idea here is that you have two tiles together and you just need like another tile to go with them to complete a set of three. Now one way you could do that is you could have a pair and then you just need another one of the same tile to make it a triplet. Now that's a really hard weight to complete because there's only two tiles, two other tiles when you have two of the same one. There's only two more left. So it's really hard to draw it. Next you could have like an edge weight, which would be a one two waiting on a three, or a seven or an eight nine waiting on a seven. And there would be um four of the single tile to complete that weight. You could also have a middle weight, which would be a like a one two waiting on a or one three waiting on a two. Or a 2, 4 waiting on a 3, 3, 5 waiting on a 4, and so on. Then you could have a double middle weight. I'm not sure if this has like a good English term for it. This is just what I'm calling it, but the idea is you have two middle weights put together. So this is like a 1, 3 waiting on a 2, and a 3, 5 waiting on a 4 at the same time. 
And the only problem with this type of weight is that it requires three tiles, so it's harder to hold on to other tiles that might be useful. And then you could have a two-sided weight, which is where you have two number tiles that are next to each other, and it can be it can be completed on either side. So this is like the best type of weight. And for example, this two three could be completed with a one or a four. Same with like a three four four five and so on. Now one thing I want to point out is that a middle weight is slightly better than an edge weight and the reason for that is that it improves more easily or it can improve. The edge weight can't really improve. It can improve to a middle weight if you draw like a 4 and discard the 1. But be beyond that it can't improve. Whereas the middle weight, in this case if you drew a 5 you'd have a double middle weight or if you drew a 4 you could discard the 1 and you'd have this two-sided weight, like a 3-4 weighting on a 2 or a 5. So because the middle weight can improve more easily, it's um, better than the edge weight in general. Finally, you could put a lot of these things together to have um, more weights, like more complex weights. So this 2-3-4-5-6 could be looked at as um, two different two-sided weights put together. So you have this 2, 3, 4, and then a 5, 6 two-sided weight. But you could also look at it as a 4, 5, 6, and a 2, 3 two-sided weight. So um, all of the useful tiles would be like a 1, 4, or a 7 pin. Any of those tiles would complete a second set of three with this group of five. So now let's look at some example hands. And the idea, idea here is going to be just choosing the best weight you can. So if your hand is like this, you're one away from Tenpai. You just need to complete the 1-2 edge weight and the 7-8 two-sided weight. And you would complete your hand. So if you look at it like that, you might just think you can just discard everything you draw until you complete um, those two weights. But... Um, this 1-2 is an edge weight, and you could draw a better weight than that, so you'll want to look at, you'll want to see if you're drawing a better weight, and you'll want to hold on to that better weight. So here you've drawn a 1, and now you have a 1-3 middle weight, which is better than an edge weight, for the reasons I talked about above. So in this case, you would want to discard the 1-2 of characters, and keep the 1-3 middle weight in the bamboo tiles. Now again, there are always going to be exceptions. Dora is going to be one of the most common exceptions. So if one, two, or three of characters was the Dora, then you might want to hold on to the one, two over the one, three. And also, if you see a lot of two bamboo already discarded, or someone called three of them, then you might want to just discard this one, three weight, even though it is a middle weight, because in that case it would be less likely to complete the weight. So let's look at another hand now. Now in this hand you have just this one completed set and then a bunch of weights and then this lone six. So you want to keep your weight over the lone tiles so you discard the six. And now let's say you complete one of those two side weights. So now you completed this five six two side weight with a four. So now you have two more two side weights here so usually you would want to discard the 1 and the 3 of characters because that's just a middle weight. Whereas these are two side weights. And you want to hold on to the better weights because those are the ones that are more likely to complete. Finally, um, in this hand, you have a three sided weight in the pin tiles and then two two sided weights. And now you've drawn a pair, so you have to get rid of something. And a three-sided weight is the best, so you'd usually choose to get rid of one of the two-sided weights. And the way you would choose would be pretty complicated, and it would have to depend on, like, Dora, as always, and also the tiles people have discarded, what you think is most likely to complete, and all of that. But the basic idea is you want to keep the better weight, which is the three-sided weight, and get rid of one of the 
um, slightly worse weights, which are the two-sided weights. Now let's look at a different group of examples, or I guess just one more example on um, improvable weights. So here you have um, a completed set and then three more groups of two tiles that could complete and if you complete those three groups you'd complete your whole hand you would have a winning hand but one thing to notice is that all of the weights are pretty bad you have a one two edge weight an eight nine edge weight and a one three middle weight so they aren't very good weights so you could just like wait only on those weights but because they aren't very good you you'll want to keep your like middle tiles in the hopes that you can draw a better weight somewhere so here you would want to discard the east wind and hold on to the eight because you might draw like a seven of characters and in that case you would have a better weight you would have a two-sided weight with the seven and the eight so you would want to keep your middle number tiles just for the chance to draw a better weight than the ones you have All right, so the next topic is less useful tiles and overlapping weights. So based on other tiles you have in your hand, a certain tile might become less useful. And one big example of this is if you have, lo if you have a lone one and also a lone four, then the one is much less useful than normal. And if you have a lone nine and a lone six, the nine is much less useful than normal. And one weight, um, one way to think about this is if you want to use the one, one in a run you would need the two and the three but even if you drew, drew a two and a three it still goes with the four so the one isn't being used still so you would have to draw another two and another three or like more tiles to go with the four in total you would have to draw four tiles in the area to make the one useful in a run whereas normally you just need two so in this case the one would be much less useful than normal just like the nine would be as well if you had a six so the same thing happens in these other examples so say you have a one two four you could look at it as a 1-2 edge weight, but again, middle weights are better than edge weights. So you have this 2-4. And then the 1 isn't really useful, because even if you drew like the 3, the 3 would still go with the 2-4, and the 1 isn't being used still. And the same is true here. You have this 1-3-4. Even if you draw a 2, it goes with the 3-4, and the 1 isn't really useful. So with this 2, 4, 5, the 2 isn't very useful. 3, 5, 6, the 3 isn't very useful. 2, 3, 5, the 5 isn't very useful. And then in these more complicated examples, like 2, 4, 5, 7, neither the 2 nor the 7 are as useful as normal. And also, if you have like 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, this 5 really isn't very useful. So, um, I do want to mention that the tiles closer to the middle are still more useful than the ones on the edge. So, like this 3 in the 3, 5, 6 example is more useful than the 1 in the 1, 3, 4 example. Because it's still closer to the middle. And you could draw the tiles on the other side, like you could draw a 2 and a 1 to go with the 3. And those tiles wouldn't go with the 5 and the 6. So now, a very, um, pretty much the same concept is um, overlapping weights. So I'll give some examples of it, but it's like if you had a 1-2 edge weight waiting on a 3, but you also had a 4-5, and that's waiting on a 3 or a 6, the 1-2 isn't very good, because even if you draw the 3, it could go with a 4 or 5, and you would need another 3 or a 6 to complete the second set. 
Now, I also want to mention that um, it's still better than nothing, so it's still a weight. So if you have nothing else, you would want to keep it. But if you have anything else that might be better, you would usually want to discard the overlapping weight. Especially in this case where it's just a single weight. Now in this case where you have like 1, 3, 3, 4, again this 1 is not... The 1, 3 is really hard to use because the 2 that goes with it goes with the 3, 4 as well. And finally you could have like two-sided weights that overlap. So here you have a 2, 3 and a 5, 6 and they can both use the 4. So if you had um... If you had a different weight, you might want to keep the other weight and get rid of one of these overlapping weights. Now let's look at this concept in some example hands. So this is a hand you might like start out with. And what you would want to notice here is that there are a lot of these um, less useful tiles and uh, yeah, just less useful tiles where you have this lone 4 and the lone 1 and the 1 isn't very useful and then you have this 1, 3, 4, this 1 isn't very useful and you have the 5, 6, 8, the 8 isn't very good so just when you look at the hand that's what you should see first that you really want to discard this 1 usually and this 1 and this 8 because those tiles just aren't going to be very helpful so you don't really want to hold on to them Next, in this example, you have a 5-6 weight and a 6-8 weight, a 1-3-5 and a 5-6 in the bamboo tiles. So, again, because of the idea of overlapping weights, you would probably want to discard this 8 because it's not really helping you much because the 8-6 is a weight that overlaps with the 5-6 weight. And you would discard the 8 before the 6 because it's better to like hold on to the pair but that's something I'll talk about more later now finally if you had something like this you should see that the 5 isn't very useful so that would be the tile you want to discard probably even before you discard like the 2 or the 8 which are lone tiles just because it's really hard to make use of the 5 specifically now if it was a red 5 though, then you'd probably want to keep it just because it's a Dora tile. So you would want to use it. And in that in this specific case, if you drew like the 4 or the 6, you could discard the one on the edge. So if you drew a 4, you could discard the 2 and use the 5 with the 3. And similarly with the 6, you could discard the 8. Now let's look at some more examples. Um, these are more overlapping weights wet rather than less useful tiles. So here you have a pair of ones. You have 2, 3, 4 and you drew a 4. So you have 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6. And then you have to get rid of a weight now. Now you're definitely going to want to choose the 8, 9 weight. Barring some kind of extreme case where Maybe someone conned the seven bamboo, so there's none of them, and then you would discard that weight. But because this weight overlaps with the five six, you're gonna want to discard the eight nine of characters. Similarly, in this hand, you have one one two three four four five six still, and then you have three different two sided weights, but the character ones overlap, so you would want to discard one of the character tile weights. And um, now a good question to ask is which one would you discard? It might actually be better to keep the 7-8 because it's more likely for someone to play in on the 9 of characters and your hand probably isn't going to be Tan Yao, but that's more complicated stuff. The idea you really want to remember is that you just want to discard one of the overlapping weights because they're harder to use. Now there are going to be cases where it isn't as clear, like in this case. So these weights overlap, but this is just a single weight, and these weights are two-sided weights. If you hold on to these, 
your hand is guaranteed to be pinfu. Whereas um, if you discard one of them, you might um, draw the other, and then you just have a single weight, and it's not pinfu anymore. But um, something to consider is this other weight can improve to a two-sided weight, so you could draw a four or an eight bamboo, and then it becomes a two-sided weight, and it's not overlapping, so it's better. So it's not as clear what you should discard in this case, but you would still want to think about discarding the overlapping weight or one of the overlapping weights because those are harder to use. It's harder to use both of them, I should say. And this is another example where it might not be as clear what you should do because um, just purely for like um, the chance of winning your hand, you would want to discard the overlapping weight. But um, you could get a straight. You could get Itsu in the character tiles, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So for that reason, you might want to hold on to the character tiles. But still, you're guaranteed to get Pinfu. So you might um, just want to go with the way that's more likely to win. So it would really just be up to you, your play, s play style and the situation on the table, all of that. You'd have to like include all of that in your decision. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next topic, which is basic pairs, and specifically hands that don't have a clear pair in them. So, if you don't have a pair, one way you could make a pair is you could just have a lone tile and then you could draw that tile again and then you would have a pair. So that would be just like a single pair weight. You could also have double pair weights, something like this, where you have one, two, three, four. You could look at it as a one, two, three and you just need to pair the four. Or you could look at it as a two, three, four and you just need to pair the one. And in this case, um, one way to look at it is you could look at it as a pair of ones already and just a two sided weight with the two three. So either way, um, if you draw one or a four, you complete a set and a pair. Then you get more complex weights like this. So here you have this lone three and you could pair the lone three, but you could also draw a two and then you'd have one, two, three and a pair of ones. And then if it was like this, two, 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 three, you could again pair the lone three, but you could also draw one or a four and use the twos as a pair. So the twos would be a pair and then the two, three would be like, would be a two sided weight on a one or a four. And then if you put the above ideas together, you can make even more complex weights. So this would be a three sided weight for a pair. It's basically just like putting together two double pair weights. So if you draw one, four, or seven, you would have two sets and a pair. And so let's say if you draw one, you would have a pair of ones and two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you draw four, you have a pair of fours and one, two, three, five, six, seven. And if you draw seven, then you have one, two, three, four, five, six. And in this case, you could take out the twos as a set and then you have a double pair weight with three, four, five, six. Just so you just need a three or a six. Or you could take out the twos as a pair, and then you have a two, three, four, five, six, three sided weight, just needing a one, four, or seven. So in this example, you could complete a pair with a one, three, four, six, or seven. Fine, um, all of these are above ones are examples you might have in Tenpai, but this last one isn't something you would have in Tenpai, but it's something that I think is worth pointing out. So if you have this like three, three, five, seven, seven, it's not exactly clear how you would make it a pair, but you could draw a three or a four or a six or a seven, and then you'd have a set and a pair. So if you draw a three or a seven, then you have three of one of them, and then a pair of the other. 
And if you draw four, you would have three, four, five, and then a pair of sevens. And if you draw six, you would have five, six, seven, and a pair of threes. Now let's look at um, this idea in some example hands. So this is going to be pretty simple, and the idea is just going to be choosing the best pair weight. So this hand is in 10 pi, and you just need a pair. So you could either keep the 5 bamboo and hope you pair that, or you can keep the 5 pin, which you would probably want to do because that's a two-sided pair weight. So you have 2, 3, 4, 5, and you could complete the pair with either a 2 or a 5. Next, let's say you keep that 5, but then you draw 2 of characters. Now you would probably want to keep the 2 of characters because even though they're both two-sided weights, the two of characters has seven tiles that go that goes with it. Any of the threes, which there are four threes, and then three twos. So that's seven. And then the two, three, four, five only has six tiles that go with it. Three of the twos and three of the fives. And then there are also other things to consider. And it also might change based on what tiles are already discarded. Finally, let's say... You keep that 2, but now you draw a 6 of characters. Now in this case, you're going to want to keep the 6 for sure, because that one's a 3-sided weight, and the 2 only gives you a 2-sided weight. Finally, let's say in this middle, this middle hand, instead of drawing a 2 of characters, you draw a 6-pin. Now which pair weight would you want to choose? Now that's actually a trick question because you wouldn't want to choose a pair of weight. You would want to discard one of the tiles from your um, set of threes so that you have a pair there and then you have a three-sided weight to complete a set. So let's say if you discard the one of characters you have a, a pair of ones and you just need a one, four, or seven to complete your last set. So again this goes back to the idea of you want to be able to see everything that you can do with your hand and that's very difficult especially when you get like really complicated hands but that's something that you would want to work on when you're trying to get better at the game now here's another example hand where you could always like discard this nine and have a pair weight on the west wind which isn't like a terrible idea because a lot of people will play into it. But in this case, you might want to keep the 9 weight because it's a 3-sided weight. So you could take out the 8s as a pair, and then you just need a 4 or a 7. Or you could use the 8s as a triplet, and you just need a 9 to complete a pair. So let's look at a few more hands. In this hand... It's pretty clear what you should discard. You should just discard the south wind. But what you want to notice is that first the hand has no pair, but second, this four, five, six, seven, eight is like a really big pair draw because it's like two two sided pair weights put together. You could look at it as a four, five, six, seven. So if you draw four or seven, you complete a pair, and now you're in ten pi. Or you could look at it as a 5, 6, 7, 8. And if you draw a 5 or an 8, you now have a pair and you're in 10 pi. And you could still complete it as a set. You could draw a 3, 6, or a 9, and you're still in 10 pi. And you could also draw your pair on the 4 or the 5. And this is very similar. Again, this 5, 6, 7, 7, 8 is like a really big pair draw. So it's like a 5, 6, 7, 7 two-sided pair draw and a five six seven eight two-sided pair draw as well as the two-sided weight with the seven eight so because these tiles are all put together um, it's easier to draw a pair in them okay one big point that you want to remember is that when you don't have a clear pair you want to choose your set weights over your good pair weights so let's say your hand is like this, and you can see you don't have a pair. Now, you draw this one pin, and you might say, oh, I remember this. 
This one, one, two, three is a two-sided weight for a pair. So since I don't have a pair, that sounds pretty good. But that's not what you would want to hold on to. You would end up losing out a lot if you hold on to this one. So let's look at... If you hold on to the one, you have to discard one of your two-sided weights. So let's say you pick the five bamboo one. Now let's say you draw a pair on the character tiles that you have. So you pair the eight. Well, unfortunately, you're pretty much committed to using your pair with the ones, so you can't use the eights as a pair, and you're not in Tenpai. Whereas, if you had discarded the one, you could use the eights as a pair, and you could discard the seven, and you would be in Tenpai. So that's this example here. If you draw the same eight, you could discard the seven, and you'd be in Tenpai. And you'd have a two-sided weight. And, um... What you really want to go through is what tiles do you lose out on with your discard. So when you discard this 5 bamboo, you lose out on the 3 or the 6 bamboo. But you also lose out on dr drawing a pair on the 7 or the 8 of characters for the reasons I talked about here. So that's a lot of tiles you're losing. And you also lose out on drawing the 5 as a pair as well the five that you discarded. So in total, that's five tiles, the seven, eight, three, five, or six. Whereas if you discard the one, you're only losing out on another one or a four, which is only two tiles. And you also have one, of, two of the ones. So it's two tiles with um, two of them out in your hand. And even if, like, in that, in this example, there were two two-sided weights. Even if the weights aren't as good, you would still want to hold on to them most of the time. Again, there are some exceptions, but most of the time, because like even in this case, you have this 8-9 edge weight and this 1-3 middle weight, and this if you use the ones as a pair, 2-3 is now a two-sided weight. But again, if you hold on to the one and discard, say, the nine of characters, discarding the nine of characters makes you lose out on the seven of characters, the one, and the three bamboo. So that's three different tiles, whereas um, discarding the one pin just makes you lose out on the one or the four pin. So even in this case, you would want to discard the one pin, which makes like a two-sided pair of white and keep your better set weights. Alright, the next part of um, the pairs idea is hands that have more pairs. Not Instead of hands that have no pairs, hands that have like extra pairs. So, the general idea is that you want to keep two pairs. So, if your hand was like this, let's use this as an example. You draw the seven of characters. So now you have a pair and a set weight mixed together, and a pair and a set weight mixed together, and then like a two-sided weight here. So um, you're going to want to remember that you want to keep two pairs. So you would either discard the eight of characters or the three pin. Which one you actually choose would depend on other stuff. But you wouldn't want to choose the seven of characters or the two pin. Now let's look at it. So the reason why you'd want to hold on to the, um, say like the two pin. So let's say you discard it so that you still have this eight of characters, which is a two sided weight. Now the problem with that is even though it's, the weight is still there. If you complete it, you discarded your two pair, so now you don't have a pair anywhere, and you're still not in ten pi. Whereas if you had discarded the three, you would have the twos as a pair, and you would be in ten pi when you complete the weight. So because like completing the weight wouldn't get you into ten pi if you discard a pair, you would want to just discard the weight so that you do get into tenpai when you complete 
complete the other weight. And um, if you discard the one of the pairs, you lose out on drawing the same tile again. You lose out on drawing the seven of characters or the two pin in this example. Because let's say you draw it, and now you can use the sevens as a triplet, but you're still not in ten by because you still don't have a pair. So, um, if you go through it by the tiles that you're losing out on, if you discard, say, the seven of characters, you're losing out on drawing the one pin, the four pin, the seven of characters again, and the two pin. Whereas if you discard the eight of characters, you're losing it out on the six or nine, but that's it. And if you discard the three pin, you're losing out on the one and the four, but not the two and the seven anymore. So right, here's another example hand where you would you have um, pairs mixed with your set weights. So you have this one one three and the six six seven, and again you want to keep two pairs. So. Um, in this case, you would want to discard the three because you want to discard the one, um, the hardest weight to complete with the pairs, which is the one, one, three, because the one, three is just the middle weight and the six, seven is a two sided weight. So you'd want to discard the three and you wouldn't want to discard a pair. Like you wouldn't discard the one of characters or the six, six bamboo. So. Again, I could go through it again, where if you discard the six bamboo, the two of characters still doesn't really help you uh, because you don't have a clear pair. So you might as well just discard the three of characters instead. Now the next point is, usually you want to keep just two pairs. You don't need more than that. So this hand is exactly the same as the above except instead of 2-3 bamboo it's 2-2 two, two bamboo so you might say well I remember this you just want to discard the three of characters but not in this case because in this case you have three pairs and you really only want two so in this case you would discard the six of bamboo now I'll go through it so if you discard like the three of characters, you're losing out on just the two of characters, which is four tiles. Whereas, um, if you're if you discard the six bamboo, you're only losing out on another six of bamboo, which is only two tiles. So that's harder to complete. So you'd want to just discard the six bamboo. And because you have two pairs, you're not losing out on drawing like the two of characters and get getting rid of the one the extra one that would have been a pair and you're not losing it out on improving one of the pairs to a triplet because you have two of them so you can use the other one as a pair now here's another example and it's a lot like the three pair example above but slightly different so here you have this five six seven and a six seven two side weight and then like two two three two two three six six seven. So again, it's a lot like the three three pair example here. So you might just discard the six bamboo. But one tricky thing is that you actually have five pairs. You have two um, the six six and the seven seven, which could also be looked at as pairs. So, because you have five pairs and you're one away from Tenpai on Chi Toitsu or seven pairs, it might be better to just discard one of your unpaired tiles. And in this case, I would pick one of the threes because um, your hand could still get to Tan Yao if you don't get Chi Toitsu. So, let's say you discard the three of characters and then you draw an eight of characters. So now you're one away from Tenpai on other hands, including Tanyao and Pinfu. 
And if you wanted to get Pinfu, you could discard the 6 Bamboo, which is probably what I'd recommend discarding most of the time, just because it gives you the best chance of like drawing your own hand, pretty much. Although, it's probably close with like the 3 Bamboo as well and the 7 Bamboo, because you could still get Chi Toitsu. But, um... You would also want to look at like in this hand if you wanted to you could call you you could call the twos or you could call these twos so that you could win your hand with Tan Yao and you would have like a two sided weight. So again, although usually you just want to keep two pairs, there are going to be a lot of exceptions and a hand like this might be one of them where you might actually just go for Chi Toitsu. Now it can get really complicated, so I can't go through like all the possible examples out there, but the simple idea to remember is that you usually just want to keep two pairs, but you do want to keep two pairs, and then the next thing to remember is that there are just always exceptions out there, and after you understand the basic ideas, you want to learn more exceptions, like as many exceptions as you can, to get better. So that's all I have for this tutorial, and I might um, make another one later, we'll see.